College of Charleston's men's basketball team is headed to the Big Dance. Today, I talk one-on-one -on -one with College of Charleston Basketball Hall of Famer Jamel President about his experience at the Big Dance for this edition of Quentin's Close-Ups. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my YouTube channel and like Quentin's Close-Ups on Facebook. Jamel President, welcome back to Quentin's Close-Ups. C-O-U-G-A-R-S. I had to say that first, Q. Yes, sir. Thanks for having me, though. <laughs> you're very welcome. Mm -hmm. I know that you're very excited because your alma mater, the College of Charleston, is headed to the big dance. And in sure. fact, you were a star back in the mid uh, '90s, to late '90s, as the star of the College of Charleston basketball team as its point yeah. guard. And of course, you were inducted into the Boss Basketball Hall of Fame thereafter. In fact, you yes, are sir. one of the top-ranked College of Charleston Cougars basketball players of all time. So when you hear that the College of Charleston is heading back to the big dance since I believe 2018. Where are you emotionally? Um, so high, Q. You know, I watched the game. Um, been going to a couple of games now. That my time's been a lot, you know, a lot loosened up a little bit. But the the last game had me a little a little scared. But um, we pulled it through. We ended up hitting some shots late in the second half. It kind of extended our lead. But um, I'm excited about the tournament. I'm, I'm excited about the team. Coach uh, Pat Kelsey's doing a great job. So. Yeah, it, 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 it just gives me butterflies like like I'm about to play on Thursday. So, yeah, I'm so excited for the team right now. Well, well, take me back down memory lane because obviously you've been through all of this before. What was it like for the College of Charleston to go to the big dance when you were a player? Um, You know, it was, it was something it was exciting. It was, it was different. You know, I just spoke to Andrew Miller earlier about the same thing that, you know, being that, you know, we were talented players, being that we wasn't at a uh, at a major Division One school, but we had major Division One athletes. We knew what we could do collectively as a team. So you know, when we first got out, you know, first NCAA uh, tournament, um, it was exciting. I think we had three out of four years we did the tournament, and um, what's really exciting is how the city absorbs us coming back in and just you know. Um, so I can I, I know those guys down there is really having it, living it up right now because the city's really really loving them and that's that's exciting. Yes, sir. And I know obviously the talk, the College of Charleston is a 12 seed college basketball team, and they will begin their journey on the uh, on the way to the Big Dance uh, on Thursday in Orlando, where they'll go against the five seed San Diego State. <laughs> Let me ask you this, Jamel. You know more about basketball than anybody that I know. Looking back then to right now, as far as the selection from last night. Would you have liked to see the College of Charleston versus uh, Furman in the second round? Um. Well, I mean, I want to. I want to get whoever we can beat. That's. I don't care who it is, you know. <laughs> but I think Furman, an in-state, uh, in-state March Madness will be a huge, a huge thing for the for the state of South Carolina. But um, but you know, we got to take one game at a time. You know, um, San Diego State. I, I watched them a little bit. They're kind of big, not as up and down as we can get. Um, defensively, they, they they really can be, you know, handed to. Them. They really can. They're not really as a high defensive team as we are. But if we hit our shots and we we drive and get to the free throw line a little bit more, I think we'll be okay. I think we'll be okay. But um, the thing is, though, as every round gets, it's the, the game's going to get even tighter and stronger as we continue to move on. And I hate to ask this question, Duke, but do you believe that either of the teams will actually get there to the Sweet Sixteen? Um, that's a tough thing to say because, you know, you got injury, you got fouls, you know, it just depends on who, which team, you know, show up at that particular time. You know what I mean? Like, um, for, it could be Carlos Charleston playing Duke and if Duke is missing his shots and not playing well, we will get the victory. So at this state of the game and this late in the season, everybody's really good. You know what I mean? Like those teams that started off with lower uh, ranking in their conference earlier, has played up and got a whole lot better. Some some kids that were out early in the season are in 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 in, in um on the team now and playing well. So it's like a it's tough to say, but everybody in the in the tournament now has, has got has a chance to to advance if they play well. Let the call to Charleston in your mind use better three point shootings. You say can they have better three three point shootings? Yes, sir. Uh, shooters or shootings? Shootings, yes, sir. Um, personally, I think. Their style of play has been really effective for them as far as living, living and dying by the three ball. Um, personally, I would like to see us get to the free throw line a little bit more because um, when we're not hitting our three-point shots, 
it's a long game for us. And as you can see, we could be down 10, 7, 8 points, hit a couple of threes, and we're right back in the game. But um, I don't think we need three, more three-point shooting. I think we need to drive a little bit more, get to the basket, um, uh, a little bit more high percentage shots. But when we're hitting out threes, we can play with the best of them. So it's kind of a you know catch twenty two in, in that situation because that's when you live and die. That's our that's our ball game. That's our bread and butter. So you know we gotta we gotta keep going with that. We can't change it up right now. And I want to get back to that in just a second. But going back to Furman, Jamel, do you feel like Furman has a better chance of beating UVA than the College of Charleston actually beating San Diego State University? Again, that's that's a tough thing to say, Q, because you know. That, I mean, those bright lights. Yeah. You know, someone that's averaging 20 points a game could be a leading score. He might go bonkers. You know what I'm saying? Things get tight, the lights go on, and he might not have a good game. And then kids that, you know, average three or, po three or four points a game can come out and add 20. I mean, th think of a situation like Carl Thomas. You know, Carl Thomas wasn't averaging lower numbers, but during the course of the season, he was topsy turvy, and then playing off the line, he had 20 points. So you really can't gauge um, at this level players, I mean, team with team. It's all about that, that 40 minutes when you hit the floor. Mm. Do you think that their, their great tempo game, meaning the College of Charleston, can actually hold up against San Diego State University and possibly the University of Virginia? I think so. I think, again, if we're hitting our shots, you know, if we're in shape, you got you to gotta figure We got the liberty of our big man getting the rebound and bringing up the floor. Usually in other teams, the big man get the ball, they look at someone to, to pass the ball to. So that opens up a whole lot of stress on our on, on our opponent's bigs, that they got to play the bigs coming down the floor. So, again, I, being biased with the college charts, I think we've got a good chance of getting to the 316 if that lineup is, is, is if we're playing well. But um, it, all, it all depends on how we come out in that first five minutes of the game it's going to really dictate the rest of the the rest of the game. Should the College of Charleston have been a one seed simply based on the fact that they won more games than most of the field? Ask that question again, Q. Yeah, should the College of Charleston have been a one seed simply based on the fact that they actually won more games than most people in their field? Number one seed? You talk yeah. about like the Dukes and the uh, right. Purdue's and the yeah, oh yeah. You no, know, that's tough. That's tough. You know, only because of the conference we play in and because of our schedule. You know, we're kind of a mid-major when we play high-level colleges, but those number one seeds, they have a, a way tougher schedule than we than we have. So um, they're going to get those number one seeds. But I don't think a number one seed would be beneficial for us. I think we're right in a nice sweet spot. Where we're playing kind of teams, you know, around our – our skill level and our, our our height level. So I think we're in a good spot if we can come out and play well. I wouldn't want a number one seed in this situation if I was Carl Charleston. And, and you know, better than anybody else, they have a lot of advantages with them right now. The depth is being built around a core group of older players, including grad transfers Ryan Larson, Pat Robertson, Dalton Bolin, and Jalen Scott. And, of course, their head coach, Pat Kelsey, he's actually been uh, to the journey twice, and they are 31 over three this year, as you know. Mm -hmm. Is this enough to make it to the Sweet 16? No. I can honestly say no. It's not enough because if we don't come out and play well, then that would be the end of our season. Mm -hmm. But considering those guys are 50 year seniors, a little older, like Bowling, those guys, man, they go pretty hard. Jalen, those guys got us, they really go hard and they really give up everything on the floor. I think coming out tonight in order for us, or in order for us for these, to be to be successful, those kids, those guys have to play really, really hard. So if I had, I'm not a betting man on games, but if I had to bet, I, I would I would bet on us tonight because I think, you know, the city, I think we, we, we're due right now. You know what I mean? It's been a long time since so we had a nice run. So I think we're due right now. And then I think the guys can really pull it out if we go hard tonight. I mean, on Thursday. Thursday, yes, sir. And I know that you haven't been in this arena in a while. But going, obviously, back to, you know, the NCAA and the, their committee, why do you think that the NCAA committee not, did not pick Duke, Tennessee, Virginia, Furman, and the College of Charleston in Greensboro to actually max, maximize on their regional interests? Well, that's, that's a great question. And, you know, I won't be able to answer that question, but I can, I can honestly say it maybe had to do with schedule, mm. wins and losses, um, 
Um, and that's what I would, I would probably say that. Um, but to be honest with you, I, I think we're in a sweet spot, Q. I think we're in a nice spot. If we get off of this first, this first win with San Diego State will give us a lot of confidence going into second round. You know what I mean? And then, like I was telling uh, Andrew Miller, being that we're a mid-major and, and there's a, a lot more pressure on San Diego State than us because we don't have nothing to lose. You know, we're kind of expecting, you know, being that, you know, we're a mid-major and we're not, you know, used to being determined every year. People are kind of not used to us. So San Diego State is not really uh, that frequent in the NCAA either, but um, I think we got a good chance of, of pulling, pulling a nice win out and getting to the second round. That's that's my thoughts, considering looking at both teams. Both teams. And you, obviously, I, as I mentioned, you've been in this position before, back in the good days in the 90s. So what's your advice right now to the kids going down to Orlando right now? How should they prepare for this event on Thursday? Well, I can honestly say, again, just speaking to Andrew Miller about it, be, me being a sophomore in that situation, I didn't really, I was really not as focused as I should be because I'm like, you know what? I got two more years for this. You know what I mean? Anthony Johnson and, and Thad Delaney, those guys were mo much more focused. So I would say to those guys, you know, take advantage of this opportunity. You know, be focused. Um, cut all the distractions outside and really say, because you never know when you get this opportunity again. And then from a career standpoint, this is how you really, this is how you really get that bag. This is how you really overseas, NBA, this is really, really on that big stage, kind of show what you can do against all the top-notch talent. So this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, and I think they need to really take advantage of it. So get your rest, eat, stay off the phone, get right. off those games, and, uh, and really focus on for the next, you know, next couple of weeks. That's right. Well, call the Charleston Basketball Hall of Famer, an entrepreneur and businessman, Jamel President. Thank you for your time. And again, welcome back to Quentin's Close Ups. Thank you, Q. Thank you, Q. Guys, don't forget, March 25th at the TD Arena, our safety day event, dayfoundation.org. Check us out. Yes, sir. Absolutely.